And that's it. That's how you can implement social authentication with GitHub, Google, and pretty much everything else. It works the same for Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, Microsoft, Medium, any platform that comes with OAuth support. When it comes to authentication using third-party providers, Laravel Socialite does pretty much all the heavy lifting for us. Most of the work we need to do revolves around adding the proper configuration. That said, it might be a good idea to at least have a basic understanding of what's going on under the hood. We'll take GitHub as an example. Before we do anything, we need to register a GitHub OAuth application. Once we register it, we'll receive a client ID and a client secret. These two will be used to identify our application and further communicate with GitHub. Now, when the user tries to log in with GitHub, we send an authorization request. This prompts the user with the authorization screen where they need to allow our application to access their GitHub profile. Once they hit authorize, we receive the authorization grant, which we can then use together with the client ID, client secret, and redirect URI to ask for an access token. Finally, we can use the access token to ask GitHub for the user resource that includes the information we need, the ID, name, and email. With this overview in mind, let's start working on an actual example. The first thing we're going to do is install Laravel Socialite. I'll grab this Composer Require command, open my terminal, paste it in, and hit Enter. Then we need to configure the GitHub provider. Let's copy these and paste them inside the config services.php file. Next up, we need to add the authentication routes. The first route will redirect the user to the authorization screen provided by GitHub, while the other one will take in an authorization code, use it to ask for an access token, and then use that token to fetch the GitHub user details. Let's copy them and go to our web routes file, paste them in, import the social light class, and let's be more specific and say auth slash github. Now this callback URL must match the one in the configuration file, so let's copy it and replace the example one. Next up, let's create our GitHub OAuth application so we can grab our client ID and client secret. To create a GitHub application, go to your GitHub profile, settings, scroll down to developer settings, OAuth apps, click register a new application, and then enter the application name, the homepage URL, and for the authorization callback URL, we need to grab this one right here. But it needs to include the host name as well. So we'll do localhost slash auth github callback. Click register application and we'll receive a client ID and we can generate a new client secret. Let's copy these and I'll move these two into our environment file. I'll scroll down, paste them here and then grab the client ID and client secret. Now that we configured our GitHub provider, we can go ahead and add a sign in with GitHub link to our login page. So I'll open the login view component and paste in some boilerplate I have in my clipboard. Even though this is an Inertia.js application, we need to use a regular link because the server will redirect us to an external page. And this link needs to be auth github slash redirect. And I also need to import the GitHub icon. Now, if I go in the browser and visit the login page, we have this sign in with GitHub button. But before we press it, let's go to our web routes file and do a die and dump of some user details. We'll do user get name, user get email, and user get ID. Now, if I go back in the browser and click sign in, we are redirected to the GitHub authorized screen. Once I click authorized, we are redirected to the callback URL together with an authorization code we exchange for an access token and then use the access token to get the user details. 
the authorization screen appears only once, so if we click login again, we won't be seeing it, we are redirected directly. In order to identify our users on future sign-ins, we'll need to store the provider and the provider ID. So let's create a migration to add these two columns to the users table. We'll do PHP artisan, make, migration, add socialite, columns to users table. So we'll scroll down and add a column for the provider, which will be a string, and nullable, and another one for the provider ID. Another thing we need to do is to make sure we allow empty passwords. So we'll do table string password nullable and then change. Now on the down method, we'll need to drop these two columns. So we'll do table drop column and we'll pass an array. And we need to change the password back to how it was. Now if I open the terminal and run the migrate command, we'll receive an error instructing us to install this doctrine package. So let's grab it and do composer require doctrine. Run the migrate command again, and here it is. Back to our web routes file, what we need to do is try to see if we can find a user based on the provider and the provider ID. So let's rename this user to socialite user, and then do user equals user where, and we have provider GitHub, and then provider ID, socialite user get ID, and here we call first. Now, if this user doesn't exist, we need to create it. So we'll do user, create, and we'll have name, which is socialite user get name, email, which is socialite user get email, provider, which is GitHub, provider ID, which is socialite user get ID. And finally, we can set the email verify that column to now, because the email is of course verified. Let's assign this to the user variable. And then down here, we can use the auth facade to log in the user. And then return redirect to the home URL. Now, if I go back in the browser and visit the login screen, click sign in, we are redirected to home and I am authenticated. Here's my name, here's my email. There are a few more scenarios we need to address. The first one is, what if the user doesn't authorize our application? How can we handle that? As I said before, the authorize screen appears only once. To make it appear again, we need to go to our GitHub application and click revoke all user tokens. Now if I go here, Log out, go to login, sign in with GitHub. Here's the authorization screen. And if I hit cancel, we get a 401, unauthorized. So that means we can go here and say try and catch the exception. And then we can return a redirect back to the login page. Now if I go in the browser and try again, sign in, cancel, we are redirected back to the login page. The second scenario we need to consider is, 
What if a user previously registered using their email and password and then tries to log in using GitHub where they have the same email? Now, this will blow up because our email column has a unique constraint. What we could do is, if the user doesn't exist, validate the incoming email and return an error message. So we could do validator equals validator and we'll use the facade make as data will have the email of the socialite user. The rule will be email needs to be unique on the users table email column. And then for the message, we'll do email dot unique couldn't log in, maybe you used a different login method. And then we can do if validator fails, we can redirect to the login page with errors of the validator. Now to test this out, we can go to our users table and remove the provider and the provider ID. This will basically turn this record into a user registered using the email and password. Now if I go to the login screen, click sign in, we get couldn't login, maybe used a different login method. So we covered this case as well. Now let's go and add Google Authentication as well. Since we have all this logic in place for GitHub, adding Google should be quite easy. The first thing I'm going to do is set up the config variables, the client ID, client secret, and redirect. I'll paste these in and then go to my env file, add in the client ID and the client secret. Let me just grab them and then go to my login and add a link for Google. We'll do Google and then Google and then Google icon. Let's import the icon. Save, go in the browser, refresh. Here is the button. But the auth, where is the route? The auth Google route doesn't exist yet. One idea would be to modify this one to accept the parameter. So we'll do provider. And then here we'll do provider. And then instead of adding GitHub, we'll say provider provider, provider, and provider. Let's search for GitHub. Okay, we're done. Let's go in the browser, refresh, click sign in with Google. It will take us to the Google authentication screen. And of course, we have two factor authentication. And we are logged in. Here's my profile, my name, and the email. One more thing we should do is add some constraints for the provider parameter. We could do where provider is either GitHub or Google. And let's add the same for the callback. And finally, we should probably move all these into a dedicated controller. So let's do PHP artisan make controller, socialite controller, and we'll grab this one and say socialite controller redirect and here we'll have public function
let's import the socialite. And then we'll have this one, which will be socialite controller callback. Call back and let's import some of these classes. Okay, let's do one more test. I'll do GitHub. And we couldn't log in. That's because I have that user. Let's remove it. GitHub. And it works. Let's do Google. And it works. And that's it. That's how you can implement social authentication with GitHub, Google, and pretty much everything else. It works the same for Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, Microsoft, Medium, any platform that comes with OAuth support. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, share it, subscribe, click the bell button, all that good stuff. Bye.